Hello, my name is Mahogany L. Brown and I will be reading a couple of poems. From the new book, Woke, A Young Poet's Call to Justice. This book is uh, one of my favorites. Um, I was able to write it along with Elizabeth Acevedo and Olivia Gatwood. We have an amazing forward by Jason Reynolds and all of the artwork is by Theodore Taylor III. In this book, we are talking about activism, ableism, allyship, body positivity, community, empathy, equality, forgiveness, freedom fighters, gender, immigration, intersectionality, individuality, joy, justice, prejudice, privilege, protest, resistance, resourcefulness, silencing, stereotyping, volunteering, and what it means to be woke. To be woke, in the simplest sense, it means to be aware. It means to see your surroundings and challenge how we strengthen our relationships with the government, the community, and nature. To be woke is to fight for your civil rights and to fight for the rights of your neighbors. To be woke is to understand that equality and justice for some is not equality and justice at all. We must stay alert. We must ask hard questions. We must stand for what is right even when it is difficult and scary. So I'm gonna read some poems that talk about that. First, activism everywhere. Our voice is our greatest power. When we stand together, we can speak up against mistreatment. We are saying that we will not be silent about the mistreatment of people. We are saying that we will not be silent. We are standing tall and firm. Because we believe in equity and equality, we are standing tall and firm. We are not yielding or bending the conversation. We are not yielding or bending because the conversation is uncomfortable. We are not yielding or bending. We understand activism happens online and offline, in the streets picketing and in the classroom teaching, on the blogs writing, on the internet sharing information. It happens everywhere. It is active. It is energy. It is resisting to be comfortable when we all have yet to feel safe and free. So right, what does that mean? Activism can happen many ways, right? That means uh, we can share all the information that we have online, but also we can start uh, donating to funds that need assistance. We can volunteer in our neighborhoods. There's not just one way to show up as uh, an activist, all right? The next poem I'm going to read is The Ability to Be. The Ability to Be. And let me show you this photo really quick. I really love this photo, right? So this one is talking about fighting ableism. Do you know what ableism is? Think about it. If you had an issue walking into a room uh, because you couldn't reach a door handle or maybe there's a step and you have a hard time walking, um, how are you making sure that everyone can walk in the room with ease, with, ac with access, equal access, right? So this is about that. The ways in which our bodies may move against the wind or the water, climb stairs or swing high in a child's park, both arms in flight, all on their own, is different. Sometimes we have sight. Sometimes we have the sense of smell. Sometimes we are working with a different set of skills all together. There is more than one way to exist. There is more than one way we learn how to speak with our hands or our eyes. There are different tones to evoke a symphony of laughter. Our fingers and toes, our arms and torsos, each courageous cloud, a thunderous declaration echoing, I am here. Because the smallest things that make us up are the largest strokes of beauty that color us brilliant. But the heart, oh my, how our hearts beat the same. Mm. I like that one, right? Because we do, we do have different ways in which, you know, we walk into a space, we walk into a room, we're different people and not all things are the same. So what does it mean to really take into consideration um, others? Uh, not just how you get to walk in a room, but, but how your neighbor gets to walk into a room, how your fellow student gets to walk into a room. Um, this poem is about allyship. Do you know what allyship is? This is definitely right next to that poem, right? So what I'm saying, uh, think about your neighbor, think about 
someone else, even if you don't have the same hardship. Um, maybe there's something that you notice uh, may not help someone that is in your, you know, in not just in your direct community, but in your world. So how do you make sure we all have access? And allyship means that you stand up and you speak about equality. You speak about equity. You speak about what you need as a human and to assure that other people receive that too. And it's a beautiful picture of a bird, the dove, in the next. Things should be different. We must keep our eyes on the prize. The prize is a good life. The good life smells like true freedom. True freedom is a song we should all be able to sing. It will happen in the hills of Appalachia. It will happen in the streets of Brooklyn. It will happen in the veins of Detroit. Discrimination will no longer be tolerated. Hate will have nowhere to hide. Powerful and meek, strong and brilliant, all of us combined as one. This is when the sky will break open its blue, blue wings and we will celebrate its lush song. So word, now this is exactly what's going on right here, right now in our world today, right? You see the protests, you see the rallies. Um, people are speaking up because they understand that just because I'm not the one that's uh, directly affected doesn't mean I'm not affected by you being inhumane to my my brothers and my sisters and 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 that is in the kinship speak uh it doesn't have to be a relation it can be someone that is you know a neighbor it can be a family member or not it actually could just be because you know what is right you know what we need to do to make sure that humanity um, grows stronger and it's not just with one kind of person ever um so what does it mean to say Black Lives Matter and show up to a protest to make sure that climate change is, you know, is real? And all those things, all of those things uh, require allies. Um, I'm going to read a poem that myself and Olivia wrote um, about intersectionality, which I think is really, really necessary kimberly crenshaw coined the term and it's a very uh in it's varied and and dense um understanding of what intersectionality is or feminism is like that's what it was coined to discuss but this is about uh the the building block right this is the foundation of how to start understanding what that is what is an intersection and this is by myself and Olivia Gatwood. An intersection is a place where things come together, like four cars waiting to go different directions at a stoplight. People intersect too, not just while moving down the street, but in who we are inside our bodies is a stoplight where our identities come together to make us a house of flamethrowers, to make us a river of living things. We all have multiple identities. You might be in a room full of girls, but no two are exactly alike. Classmate with nose ring and printed headband. Soccer player with flowing scarf and full smile. Student in library with brown skin and headphones. Sk skateboarder with hat to the back and book in hand. Swimmer with painted nails and crew cut. Dancer who says only call me by my name. That's intersectionality. We all have different experiences of the world and we all have experiences we share. Intersectionality means paths crossing one another with respect. Intersectionality means moving with intentionality and acknowledgement of your surroundings. Intersectionality means we are all happening. We are all supporting each other. We are an ecosystem living and growing, depending on each other for survival, evolving and becoming whole. Cool. So that's intersectionality. Yeah. Which is super helpful, right? Because you think, oh, well, I mean, all girls like this or all boys like this or all people from this area like this. And that's not what it is, right? There's we, we are not one person. Each of us have our own dreams and goals and ideas. Um, and that is that is really the most important thing for us to all not just be grouped in a box and, and mistreated or or spoken for or ignored you know where i'm going um this poem that i'm going to share 
have so many favorites. It's an entire anthology. I'm really excited that you all should be getting your copy. Um, but this one is by uh, Elizabeth Acevedo. And it is about body positivity. Have you ever woke up and looked in the mirror and thought, ugh, the pimple, or I want my hair to do something different, or, right? We have all these things that we really put on ourselves before we even walk out the door. Um, so this is really about celebrating yourself, the good body. You know your joints that bend and straighten? Your mouth and ears and eyes, your limbs that lengthen as you reach for the earth or clouds? You know your hair that maybe coils upward, stretching or falls straight down your back? Your body can be a jungle gym of movement. Your body can be a chapel of quietude. Your body can roll and grow like a long sentence. Your body can be like small, mighty punctuation. Your body can be encased in metal, adorned with wheels. It can need medicine and extra support. Sometimes your body can make you angry or sad because it doesn't look how you want it to or it doesn't do what you'd like it to because it might have limits that you want to move beyond. But remember, even on the days you aren't feeling yourself, your body is always a good body because it carries the good in you. And I'll show you that picture. Check that out, right? Those moments where you doubt yourself, don't. Stop it right now. You are fresh, you are fly. Um, and speaking of fresh and fly, I think I wanna read this one. I don't get to read it often, but it's about individuality. Do you consider yourself unique? Do you consider yourself weird and strange? If so, good, keep all those things. Teeth dance with silver. Eliza is dressed uniquely like a mannequin from three different stores. She wears a red dress with pink leggings underneath. She wears a yellow sneaker on her right foot and a white sneaker on her left foot. Her socks have bumblebees dancing on them and touch her knees. She sports candy pop rings on both of her thumbs. She wears a scarf the color of grass and her teeth dance with silver. Some kids whisper she's not matching, that's so weird. But I think when she walks in the room, she demands attention. Her ponytails curly and hair ties bouncing. Her eyes smiling before she even says hello. Her smile is a lighthouse that no one can turn away from. Her hand outstretched in friendship. I ask why she wears so many colors at the same time and she laughs. Streamers of silver everywhere, she says. Red is one of my favorite colors. Pink is the color of the flowers outside my window. Yellow for the bumblebees that make honey and for the sun, my mom nicknamed me Sunshine. Eliza is my hero. I tell her I think she's cool. The way she sees a rainbow, every time she looks in the mirror. I love that poem. And can you see Eliza? You see that green scarf and the red dress? Check out them socks. Those are bumblebees, right? You see that you see the, the ring pop on her thumb. Neat. Theodore Taylor III is so awesome. I love the work that he did here. Um, and I'm gonna read one more poem and then I'm gonna answer your questions. I got some really cool questions. I appreciate y'all sending those in. Um, let's see. The poet's pen. And this is about silencing. Uh, silencing. Do you know what silencing means? Like to tell someone to be quiet, to tell someone to hush or shut up. Um, but what does it mean um, when you're silencing people by like not even acknowledging that they're speaking, right? What does the people of a peep, sorry, we'll start again. What does the silence of a people sound like? Maybe the silence you hold in your chest the silence before a body falls to the ground, the silence after a cry pierces the air, the silence when listening for a newborn's breath, or does it sound like an orchard growing toward the sun? Does it sound like a moon moving above the crashing waters? Does it sound like a poet and the poet's pen moving against the paper, speaking stories about their home city and a single mother's song? moving against the paper, speaking stories about farming and a father's well wishes or a graduation ceremony. 
moving against the paper, speaking stories about bicycle spokes and trading cards clicking hello to passers-by. A silence can sound like many things. That is why we choose to write poems as a people's almanac for those unable to speak. Thank you so much for letting me share these poems with you. Um, I hope you are sharing your work, your writing. I hope not, not only that you're reading, but you're also like involving yourself in archiving what's happening. Make notes about what you see right here, right now. What you're seeing is uh, obviously history, but also your perspective is important. Um, I'm going to get to these questions now. One said, let's see, I lost my little page there. Hmm. Try it again. Oh, okay. There we go. Once. Okay. Three questions. I'm going to answer them all. Daniela. How are you, Daniela? Thank you for your question. Have you ever felt any of this? If so, what made you feel this? Absolutely. I felt silence before I said something to, uh, you know, um, friends about, uh, something that I saw happening, specifically like co-workers, and I was ignored until it, it, it became too much. And then um, everyone had to rally around and make sure that we, we got to the source of the situation. Um, but also, it, it happens now, I think. That's why we're having such a hard time in our community. Um, that's why the rallies are happening in this way. If you keep telling people what is they see happening isn't happening, that is a form of silencing as well. So... Um, and I feel so sad that it is not only happening to me, but it's happening worldwide, nationwide, you know. Um, so th that is why I write, um, especially the poet's pen. That's very much the reason that I come to the page, because I understand that if I don't write it down, then um, how will I get my story out? Um, writing makes me feel better first and foremost because I I'm able to articulate myself in a way that that may get uh messed up when I'm speaking because I'm nervous or because I'm talking fast um so the poet's pen is absolutely uh that's that's totally a, a what do they call a autobiographical poem uh Jada Star hi Jada Star Jada Star's question is where did you get the ideas and inspiration to do poetry funny enough I started reciting poems that weren't mine it's called oratory or to oratorical contest in fourth grade but I didn't start writing my own poems until I was 21 and the inspiration really came from seeing people around me and and wanting to share ideas and memories and moments and joy and and sadness all of it I wanted to share these these moments um in a space where where poems were being shared and at that at that point it was like a you know a cafe um and the ideas, they really are coming from everyday life. It comes from meeting people. It comes from talking to people. It comes from watching the news. It comes from reading other books and other authors. Um, my imagination, you know, uh, but a lot of my poetry really comes from being in the world, making sure I'm, I'm looking at everything, um, staying woke, you know? Uh, and finally, Fiona. Hi, Fiona. Fiona says, what is your favorite food? Such a good question. I think lasagna is like between lasagna and like steamed seafood, like uh, Cajun, uh, Old Bay and butter. And oh, those are my two favorites. It's a tie. It's a tie. I don't know which one yet. Um, but lasagna is really good. Lasagna is very good. I'm, you actually just made me very hungry just now. Okay, I'm going to end with a poem, a small one. Woke. And I'll show you. See that? Yeah. Oh, and there's pictures of me, Olivia, and Elizabeth. Okay. Woke. You ready? We are awake, wide in our understanding of what is so pretty and shiny, of what is dull and dim in this world. But look here even wider between our outstretched arms, a brave and growing world. Look closely, don't forget, we invited you here to live inside this truth, this freedom. We never sleep on what's at stake. Thank you so much. 
I hope you enjoyed that reading. I can't read, wait to read poems that you are writing about being woke, being aware, seeing around you, uh, fighting for justice and uh, what it means to be a global citizen. Welcome to the world of woke. I'm so excited to see you.